I hope you like my uh, face mask with my schnud, uh, which I nicked from my son's room. Uh, I couldn't get hold of any uh, surgical face masks because uh, there's so short supply. However, um, I suppose they are as useful as a face mask, um, according to medical experts, which say it doesn't really protect you against the risk of catching coronavirus. Um, but I wanted to grab your attention, and the reason I wanted to grab your attention is I want to talk to you today about what employers can do in order to try and protect their staff and themselves from catching coronavirus. It's about containment at this stage. Um, so firstly, why is it important? It's important for two reasons. Firstly, there is a legal duty on employers to protect the health, safety and welfare of its staff. And secondly, and just as importantly, is we're trying to run a business here. We need to minimise the disruption that is caused to our business. So we need to really focus our efforts on trying to contain the risk. So I've got some top tips to share with you. I've split it down into five areas. And those areas are communication, cleanliness, flexibility, closure and review. So dealing with those in turn, um, in terms of communications, this is probably the most important thing you can do. And what you need to be communicating with your staff about is around personal hygiene, first and foremost. Um, so we've got the wash your hands and sing happy birthday for 20 seconds, etc. Um, as well as catch it and bin it. That message needs to be given out loud and clearly to staff. We need to obviously be encouraging them to use sanitised gel, etc. We also need to be communicating to our staff about returning from abroad. We need to understand where are they going, when are they coming back, and where they, you know, you know, what are the potential risks? Do they fall with any of the hotspots? So let's get our staff to communicate with us about where they've been, uh, and particularly if they've come from any hotspots. There are some details on the government websites to where the current hotspots are. If they have come back from a hotspot, then they'll need to know what to do upon return from holiday, which might be to make contact with HR to decide whether or not they should be returning to the workplace or whether they should wait and see. You also need to consider about giving guidance to staff if they are displaying any symptoms. What do they do again? Um, and make sure that they choose not to come in until they've taken appropriate guidance. Also, what do staff do if they start feeling ill at work and displaying those symptoms? Or what if a manager observe someone who seems to be displaying symptoms. What are your protocols to deal with that? The government suggestion is that we need to isolate them in a room within the workplace um, and keep people two metres or more apart. And then we also need to really let staff know what our position is on sick pay. And I will do a separate vlog on sick pay because there are it's, uh, quite, quite a few issues that need to be considered. The second point was cleanliness. Um, and this is steps that you as an employer can take to improve the cleanliness and the hygiene within the workplace. So you need to think about a regular deep clean and instructing your cleaners or your clean contractors to do that. Sanitised gels distributed across the workplace for easy access. Bacterial wipes for staff in uh, office working environments where they can wipe down their machines. Also think about um, lots of bins, lots of tissues dotted around in case people are coughing and sneezing, they have the ability to catch it, bin it and then lots of signage to remind staff of the importance of hygiene during this period. The next point is flexibility. Um, and it's really just this message for you to think about how you can be flexible in the workplace to try and minimise the risk of uh, people bringing coronavirus into the workplace. So if you can allow people to work from home, do so. Make sure they've got the equipment and the facilities to do so. Think about also how we conduct meetings, both internally and externally. Do we have to have face-to-face -face meetings or can we, for a temporary period, have phone calls or video conference calls? It's about minimising the risk. Think also about business travel. Get your staff to review what business travel is coming up and ascertain what is essential and what is non-essential and cancel the non-essential meetings. The fourth point is closure. What happens if you have to close your business? In fact, we've already had a few UK businesses do that down in London. If you have to close your business, then you have to send your staff home. And in theory, if you stand, send your staff home, you have to pay them their pay. Unless you have a layoff clause in your contract of employment that allows you to lay them off without pay for a temporary period. That can be up to four weeks before employees have the right to claim redundancy pay. However, they are entitled to statutory guarantee, but it is a nominal amount. So it's a business decision whether or not you want to lay them off, even if you have that right to do so, and how much you pay them. And the final point is the need for review. 
This is changing daily and it will be sensible to set up a task force within your organisation who will monitor the daily updates, review the communications that have been given to staff and update the communications where necessary. So, be sensible, be clean. Thank you.